In today's final touch, age, only a number for a little boy in Louisiana. Take a look at the drumming skills of five-year-old Jeremiah Travis. Way to go, buddy. Oh. Jeremiah's mom, Nicole, says he's always loved to tap and bang on things, but she never <laughs> thought it would lead to him becoming regular member of the St. Helena High School Band. Jeremiah says his cousin taught him to play the drums. When asked why he liked playing the drums, he said, well, because it's easy. No way. No way. Could he that be is, any cuter? I know, he's so cute. Adorable. I love that honorary member. Thanks for having me again. You're, I appreciate it. Only one more week to go. I, one more day and one, one more week. We're counting them down. Thanks for watching, everybody. News 3 now at 5 starts right now. And right now at 5, why a former motel in Rock County has people concerned about the criminal past of the people staying there. And more details about the story we broke yesterday. A Madison teacher is speaking out about how the school district disciplines students and what they think should be done. Plus, two Green Bay Packers will be inducted into the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame this summer. We'll tell you who they are. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. And right now at 5, we have breaking news in our newsroom. The Middleton Cross Plains Area School District says the students involved in making threats to two high schools earlier this week have now been identified. The threats were made over Instagram on Tuesday. The district says the students have been suspended and police are deciding whether they want to bring charges forward on the students. This is a developing story. We will have the latest in our later newscasts and always online at channel3000.com. Folks in a small town in Rock County say they're concerned about the number of sex offenders moving in. And they're also wondering if the place that so many of them are living is actually legal or not. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter has been following the story this week. He joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with why a former motel has so many people upset. Adam? Yeah, Eric and Susan, the town of Harmony has a little bit more than 2,000 residents. So when the chairman of the town board found out he has close to three dozen sexual offenders living near his home, he started asking questions. This former motel near the border of Janesville in the town of Harmony has the attention of Jeff Clentz. One of the neighbors of that establishment called us and they had apparently had read where there was a, a sexual offender going to be released there. Years ago, the board chairman had heard the motel could possibly be sold to a drug and alcohol recovery group, but says that was the last he'd heard. But when he recently started digging deeper, we found out that 10 of them were living at the old Pine uh, Inn. The group currently running the facility is called the Jesse Crawford Rehabilitation Center. And even though the space was intended for those looking to recover from issues with drugs or alcohol. I didn't anticipate the number of sex offenders uh, right now. President and CEO James Crawford says he believes there's currently eight sex offenders living in the space right now, seven of which have been recommended by the DOC. He says each one of them are on electronic monitoring and are given drug and alcohol testing. My belief is that Sex offenders need a place to live, like anyone else in our community. And in a situation like this, at least they're monitored. But Cleanse and others in the area still have questions. Can they leave the property? Are they being monitored by a ankle bracelet? Um, do they have rights to have kids at the location? Now, Clem says another main concern that he has is what the building is currently zoned as. He says right now a conditional use permit still has it zoned as a motel, not a recovery center. And Crawford said he is willing to meet with the town board if necessary. All right, Adam, thank you. The name of the man killed in Tuesday's officer involved shooting in Beloit has now been released. Police say 23 year old Monte Penning was spotted driving a stolen car, which led to a chase. Officers say Penning was observed to have a gun and was shot by three officers near the 1800 block of Harrison Avenue. Now, since then, investigators have not said if Penning did in fact have a gun. The Wisconsin Department of Justice is investigating the officer involved shooting. The three officers involved have been assigned to administrative work while the investigation continues.
A little freezing drizzle earlier today really made things slippery across the area. Let's check on the weather now with Gary. Gary? Well, it all depends on where you were. Uh, you know, some areas had temperatures above freezing, other areas did not, and that made all the difference between whether or not you had slippery road surfaces or uh, just uh, plain wet roads. And you can see right now, Madison is risen to a temperature of 38 degrees. Janesville's at 43. So slippery roads, not a problem right now through much of uh, the area from Madison southward. But to the north, temperatures are below freezing just north of the Dells. That's where roads could be a slippery problem. So three things to know. Some flurries, some freezing drizzle tonight. Then some, uh, some drizzle or flurries tomorrow afternoon. And we're still looking for colder weather this weekend. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that does include quiet weather as we head toward the Christmas holiday. All right, thank you, Gary. Serious injuries have been reported following a crash today in Madison. Police say it happened just before 1 o'clock this afternoon on the High Point Road Bridge between Watts Road and D'Onofrio Drive. The fire department says the bridge was very icy and that conditions in the area are dangerous. Madison police said several bridges and overpasses experienced that freezing drizzle this afternoon. Employees in the Madison School District are frustrated over the district's handling of a student's repeated bad behavior and the disciplinary policies in place for students who break the rules. This follows the story we broke yesterday about the Jefferson Middle School student who had been involved in some 25 incidents prior to bringing a BB gun to school and shooting a student with it. Jamie Perez joins us now to share what changes the teachers want to see here, Jamie. The person that I spoke with today wants to remain anonymous because they're scared of losing their job for talking to us. But the district changed its discipline policy several years ago under former superintendent Jen Cheatham. The person that I spoke with today says that policy that is still in place makes it nearly impossible to expel or suspend a student. They also said while this policy isn't working for some students who repeat repeatedly act out. They don't believe that punishing students would solve the problem either. They said they want the district to look at the policy in place, look at the levels of punishments that students are facing for their actions, and instead of using a punishment or no punishment type of model, they want a more rehabilitative model instead. I don't necessarily think that punishment and consequences are going to change a child's behavior when a child has been um, exhibiting the same behaviors over and over and over again. Um, when you get to that point where the consequences aren't causing uh, the child's behavior to change, then you got to do something different. That person added that kids who act out need some sort of support system in place, whether that's someone who can talk to them about mental health, a trauma expert, or whatever else they need to change their behavior. I did also reach out to the district to ask them if they would consider a different approach to their model or if they believe that their current policy is working. They said in part, research shows that behavior change takes time. We believe in teaching and intervention over consequences and punishment. We want to respond to behavior in a way that is just and equitable. So coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear more on how teachers end up getting caught in the middle of the decisions that the district makes. Uh, tough work to do. All right, Jamie Perez reporting. Jamie, thank you. Sure. The Dane County Sheriff's Office is continuing to look for an AWOL inmate. Deputies say 27-year-old Rondino Fleming walked out of the Ferris Center in November. He is serving a 25-week sentence for battery and has been given Huber work release. Deputies say he's facing a new charge now of escape. Officials say he was last seen walking toward Rimrock Road. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call authorities. Police are investigating how a driver crashed into a pole that then fell and hit part of a strip mall this morning in Marshall. This happened along Plaza Drive about 9 o'clock. Officials say no one was hurt. There's no word yet on how much damage was done to that building. Waukesha police say two officers were injured in a fight with a suspect that led to a chase through 10 Milwaukee area communities. Officers were investigating a report of a suspect who was going to steal from a clothing store last night. They began questioning a couple in a vehicle and asked the male passenger to step out. Police say the man pushed the woman out of the vehicle, began fighting with the officers, and put the car in reverse, running over one of the officers and knocking down the other. The vehicle and suspect were later spotted in Milwaukee, which led to a nearly 65-mile pursuit before an arrest was finally made. The 64-year-old man accused of shooting three people, killing one, and rigging his apartment with gasoline and explosive levels of natural gas is now heading to trial. Henry West remains in the Marathon County Jail on a $10 million cash bond. Investigators say West was about to be evicted from his apartment in Schofield and was upset about being fired from the cemetery several years prior. 
He's charged with 17 counts, including murder, 11 counts of attempted murder, arson, and obstructing an officer. West scheduled to be back in court in February. Not much has changed when it comes to what the public thinks in Wisconsin about impeaching President Trump. That's according to the newest Marquette Law School poll. It comes after public testimony in congressional impeachment hearings has wrapped up when comparing these December numbers to those from November. The percent of those supporting the impeachment and removal of President Trump has stayed the same, 40 percent. Those opposing has gone down 1 percent to 52 percent, well within the margin of error. When it comes to head-to-head -head general election matchups between the president and Democratic candidates, polls in October showed Democrats with a bit of a lead. And then in, no in November, we saw President Trump a little bit ahead, uh, again, mostly inside the margin of error, uh, but a bit of a lead. This month, it's tightened a little bit more, and all of the races, uh, just spoiler alert, all of the races are very, very close. Now in December, the poll shows potential Democratic candidate Joe Biden ahead of the president by 1%, but the president ahead of potential candidates Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, and Cory Booker by one point ahead of Bernie Sanders by two points. Two-thirds of Democratic primary voters say they may change their minds about that, so obviously a lot can still change. Opponents of a power line in southwestern Wisconsin are taking their fight to federal court. The plaintiffs say state regulators have conflicts of interest that should have kept them from approving the power line project. The lawsuit was filed by the Environmental Law and Policy Center on behalf of the Driftless Area Land Conservancy and the Wisconsin Wildlife Federation. The $492 million, 100-mile-long high-voltage project known as Cardinal, the Cardinal Hickory Creek Line was approved in September. UW-Madison giving its students a little extra motivation during finals week with the help of some four-legged friends. Dogs on Call is bringing in dogs of all shapes and sizes. They want to motivate students and also help de-stress them just a bit. Today is a study day at UW, but finals will officially start tomorrow. Dogs on Call comes to the university about 65 times a year after finding research that shows dogs can help a student's academic performance. Of all the family members that they have back home, they will admit that they miss their dogs the most. They just feel so much better just having some time to pet the dogs. Other than dogs on call, UW will start its penny promos tomorrow at restaurants around campus. Those give students one cent meals and food during specific times of day. The promos only run during finals week. Former Green Bay Packers players Brett Favre and Jordy Nelson will be inducted into the 70th anniversary class of the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame. You might remember that guy, Brett Favre, led the Packers to a Super Bowl win. Only pa player in NFL history to win three consecutive MVPs. Nelson holds the 100-year-old all-time record for receiving yards in a season for the Packers. Athletic icons like Vince Lombardi, Bart Starr, Bud Selig, Herb Cole, just a few of the 143 members of the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame. The ceremony will happen on June 5th. The Packers are asking for your help to come shovel Lambeau Field ahead of the matchup with the Chicago Bears on Sunday. They say they need about 600 fans to come to Lambeau tomorrow to help clear the snow from the stands. The Packers will provide the shovels and they will pay fans $12 an hour. Shovelers must be 18 or older. Badger volleyball team getting ready for its six Sweet 16 matchup against Texas A&M. They'll play the Aggies tomorrow, 1 o'clock at the Fieldhouse. Tickets are on sale now for the game. You can get them at uwbadgers.com. And coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear from the Badgers ahead of that big matchup tomorrow. More to come on News 3 Now at 5. The House Judiciary Committee holds its final debate on articles of impeachment. We'll have more on today's hearing. And coming up tonight at 6, with colder temperatures in the forecast, we'll help you prepare for the worst of winter. That's coming up tonight at 6. And talk of a trade deal with China again setting stocks climbing. The Dow up 221 points. The Nasdaq adds 63. The S&P 500 jumps 27. And we'll be right back.
An update, we have new details about the students who were involved in making threats to two Middleton high schools earlier this week. Middleton Police Department saying three Middleton students, two 16-year-old males and 17-year-old Jacob Rip are accused of making the threats. A tentative charge of unlawful use of computerized communication systems will be referred to the Dane County DA's office for the three boys. They are accused of making threats of violence on Instagram against a planned student protest scheduled to take place the following day at Fireman's Park. The students have also been suspended. The House Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on articles of impeachment soon, capping a second day of spirited debate. In a final show of political fireworks on the House Judiciary Committee, Republicans propose amendments to the articles of impeachment against the president. All are expected to fail with Democrats outnumbering GOP members on the committee. Lawmakers are considering two charges, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. If they pass out of committee, the charges will face a full House vote, likely next week. This is a vote that people will have to come to their own conclusion on, and uh, the facts are clear. Irrefutable, in fact. If you watch the impeachment inquiry, the only bipartisan vote was no. CBS News has learned the president is considering adding attorney Alan Dershowitz to his personal legal team if impeachment moves to a trial in the Republican-controlled Senate. First daughter Ivanka Trump says one out of every four mothers returns to work within two weeks of giving birth because she cannot afford to miss a paycheck. Today, the president joined her at a White House summit calling for reforms on family leave and affordable child care. Ivanka led the summit's discussions with a bipartisan panel debating policies on long, de long delayed paid family leave and affordable child care. The president gave his stamp of approval. We want every mother to have the chance to spend those precious few weeks with her newborn or adopted child. And I understand statistically, they show statistically it's so much better for the baby in growing up. President Trump highlighted a breakthrough earlier this week when congressional leaders reached a deal to offer 12 weeks of paid parental leave to federal workers. Let's get a look at your first alert weather now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti tracking the precipitation that moved through Wisconsin today. Gary? Yeah, for the most part, it was very light across southern Wisconsin. The accumulating snow stayed to the north and caused some uh, very big uh, problems on I-94 near Eau Claire, a big pile up there. But there were slippery spots across southern Wisconsin. You saw the story on the, uh, the traffic accident on High Point Road. A lot of times bridges will freeze before main roads because you can have the cold air circulate around them and the temperature of the bridge will cool off a little bit faster than the surrounding roads. But you can see all of the heavier precipitation has shifted to the north and east, but there's still some drizzle, maybe some freezing drizzle or some flurries out there. And we'll con uh, continue to see chances for that overnight. But you can see on high-resolution Doppler radar, very little in the way of precipitation able to be detected by uh, the radar. Now, temperatures are critical as far as precipitation type and whether the roads will be slippery. Notice in Madison, we've actually warmed up to 38. Janesville's at 43. But north of the Dells, uh, the Dells right now 34 degrees, but Camp Douglas down to 29, 32 in Viroqua. So the farther north you go, the more likely you're going to be running into slippery road conditions. Three things to know about the forecast, some flurries, maybe a little freezing drizzle in spots tonight, some drizzle or flurries tomorrow with temperatures in the mid 30s, and then some light snow tomorrow night, maybe with mixes of freezing drizzle, but that will lead to colder weather this weekend as temperatures fall off on Saturday. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Camp, downtown Madison, just cloudy skies right now. High today, the current reading of 38, the low temperature 16, and right now we're sitting at 38 degrees with most Mostly cloudy skies. Winds out of the south southwest at eight miles per hour, so that's why our temperatures have come back up significantly since the last couple of days. Wind chill right now at 32 degrees. Chances for a white Christmas, highest historical probabilities up in the northern part of the Midwest, a 90% chance or greater there. Here in southern Wisconsin, we'll kind of break this down about a 60 to 75% chance north of Madison, about a 50 to 60% chance from Madison southward. That's a, considering one inch of snow on the ground is a white Christmas. But Will it be a white Christmas this year? You can see most of southern Wisconsin free of snow, but once you get north of, uh, say, the Dells, the snowfall amounts increase pretty rapidly, and I don't think it'll be an issue for central and northern Wisconsin. But here in southern Wisconsin, taking a look at future track snow through next weekend, you can see very little in the way of precipitation expected over that whole time period. This is going out 10 days, and we're seeing just chances for some very light snow in the northern parts of the area. And you can see that comes out to about maybe a half inch overall. So that's probably not going to do it. We'll have to see if we get any snow in the days immediately before Christmas itself. Temperatures right now, teens in the northern part of the state, upper 30s here, but there actually is a cold front to our west, and temperatures will start dropping off a little bit later on this evening. So our forecast calls for mostly 
cloudy skies tonight. Some flurries, maybe a little patchy freezing drizzle. Low temperature dropping to 27. Then for tomorrow, look for mostly cloudy skies, perhaps a few flurries or a little bit of drizzle in the afternoon. High temperature at 36. Future track, cloudy skies tonight. Again, some flurries, maybe a little patchy freezing drizzle. Maybe a few breaks in the clouds late with low temperatures in the upper 20s. But tomorrow, we'll see cloudy skies and a chance for some drizzle or flurries in the afternoon. Highs in the mid-30s. There could be some light snow, maybe a little freezing drizzle in there tomorrow night for a brief period of time. But on Saturday, those winds shift around to the northwest and temperatures actually start falling during the day with temperatures in the 20s. As we take a look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, cold for Sunday, then a little bit of a warm up with a chance of a flurry Monday. Temperatures closer to the upper 20s uh, toward the end of next week and then a brief cool down at the start of next weekend. As we take a look at first alert traffic right now, well, uh, the Beltline right now looking pretty slow in both directions at Park Street. You can see the roads are wet, but again, temperatures are above freezing. So it shouldn't be a problem, at least on the main highways, but seeing delays eastbound in the Beltline from Monona Drive over to uh, just uh, west of Park Street, then westbound from around Fish Hatchery Road to John Nolan Drive. Also uh, stalled vehicles on I-3990-94 at uh, the US-151 exit. Right now, 24 minutes in the westbound direction or eastbound direction on the Beltline from University Avenue to the interstate, 22 minutes back in the westbound direction, and a quick 25 minutes down to Janesville on I-3990, 18 minutes to Sauk City, and 16 minutes to Sun Prairie on US-151. That's your news for now for slur traffic. Thank Thank you, Gary. Go ahead on News for Now at 5. Pulling plastic off the shelves. How grocery stores across the world are doing away with waste. That's after a short break.
And we have more breaking news right now. Several hidden cameras were found in students' hotel rooms during a school-sponsored trip to Minneapolis last week. And a spokesperson for the Madison School District confirms that students from Madison East High School found those devices in their rooms. The Minneapolis Police Department is investigating in coordination with the Madison Police Department. The MMSD spokesperson says a Madison East teacher who was chaperoning the trip has been placed on leave during the investigation. The zero waste revolution is gaining steam as a growing number of grocery stores are doing away with plastics. Cindy Palm reports from a shop in England that has gone plastic free. From nuts to milk to everyday spices, there's no plastic packaging here. It's Connor Ben's first time shopping at Clean Kilo in Birmingham, Britain's second largest city, but he knew he'd need his own containers. This is just an old vinegar bottle that I brought from home. Yes, this one, yeah. A vinegar bottle that will now hold hand soap. And what do you think of it? Um, it's great, to be honest, yeah. I think it's the way forward for shops. Mom and daughter Kate and Olivia North traveled 30 minutes to get here. We're making a concerted effort to kind of cut down on packaging and plastic specifically, but any kind of packaging really. Jeanette Wong opened the Zero Waste store last year after she and her partner raised $26,000 online through crowdfunding. The more of these shops that there are, the bigger impact on reducing plastic pollution that we have. I noticed that your ice cream containers are reusable. Yeah, so as of all our local suppliers, we always try to ask them to reuse containers. Customers don't seem to mind that some items cost more than at a big retail chain. Like every time you're buying something that's a little bit more expensive, you're sort of donating to a charity or something. You know, you're donating yeah, to... Yeah, you're kind of supporting the way you want the world to be. Yeah. Do you think you'll come back? Definitely, yeah, 100%. The plastic-free concept is catching on quickly. Clean Kilo just opened its second store in the city. Cindy Palm, CBS News, Birmingham, England. And stay with us. We'll have another check your forecast in just a moment.
Well, there is a high resolution Doppler. Not much out there, but there could be some drizzle, maybe a little freezing drizzle up north of the Dells where temperatures are below freezing. Elsewhere, temperatures are above freezing. So I think roads will be fine at least for the next few hours. All right, we'll have more updates in 30 minutes on News 3 Now at 6. Stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell.